Okay, we're we're recording. So Ronnie just showed us that she is like veering off the path here and making some great choices. Let's see it, Ronnie. Cool. Talk to us a little bit about it so we're sure that we're getting your voice. Well, what I decided to do was to make use really bright solid colors. So these are the next three. And every section to simply change the color. Keep A, which is charcoal, all the way through. And then every section do a different color and just solid. And you know, I, I'm sure that when I see all of yours today, I'm gonna to think, oh no, I gotta do a, a real one like it should be done. But I just figured that if I'm gonna wear this all the time, then, and I wear black and charcoal all the time, then this would give a pop of color to my black boots that I wear every day and my dresses. So that's what I did. Brava, I would say that sounds like a beautiful choice. And I love that you've just stepped right into embracing what works for you. So well, as you know, I am quote bedridden since my accident. So I'm working from home and I'm doing this. And of course I have a ginormous stash. So I obviously have many much time the whole week to have been knitting this thing. And I thought, well, it'll be entertaining for me. That's Although I'm jealous when I see everyone else's, I'm sure. I love and Bev, it. Bev, you got your yarn. Tell us about it. It arrived an hour and a half ago. <laughs> so I, I haven't couldn't. even, I haven't even, you know, bound it into balls yet. I absolutely love it. Do you remember what we were going to do A, B, and C as? Hmm. Were we, gonna, we were going to use the yellow for the pop of color, right? Yep. Yeah, I remember that. Um. I think you were going to do, I can't, you know, I honestly can't remember. I think, it, well, you could start out with, I mean, the, you know, maybe more safe could be to have the purpley as your background, but it really is up to you. I was kind of thinking that myself. So I have to write this down. My short term memory has gone. <laughs> Well, it's so nice to see everybody. I've like made myself a new little Zoom corner in a different room and I, I have my computer on a stool and my my knitting is like over behind the stool. So I'm gonna have to get a little creative in grabbing my knitting. I boxed myself in. Does anybody have questions or thoughts? Have yeah. Have one question. Did anyone have a problem where it says uh, when you're coming back and it says uh, knit five and then slip one, knit one with it actually not working out right? Like maybe you have to knit it and then slip it for the contrast color? I see some nods. Does anybody want to pipe in? I just, I just fixed it. That's all. That's what I did, but I, I, thank you. I thought oh. I must be crazy. I did the count every single row. I had the right number of stitches, but yes, I had to fix it every once in a while to make it come out right. Well, and, and the benefit, I was actually gonna maybe note this in a, in a little blog post. I think the, 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 you know, for the experienced knitter where we can like look at what we've been doing. I mean, my first step was probably like you guys, I looked back at the whole row, like did my little blips of color line up as they should, they did. And I was like, well, I'm stuck over here at the end. I'm just gonna add a stitch or whatever it was just to yeah. fix it right at the edge. And so right. I, I don't know that everybody would feel comfortable veering off, but when you're looking at the knitting in front of you, I don't know if it's, it must be a pattern like mess up, but with 11,000 people that have made this shift towel, like I can't believe that nobody's besides us has noticed this anomaly. I you, you, you experienced it too? I did. I called a few of my knitting friends who have knit it. Yes, they all had the same problem. Okay, yes. good, good. They said it's something in the, in the pattern. She was off by a stitch. Um, About three times. Yes, and didn't, fit, didn't put erotica in for good. it. Good. Has anyone looked to see if she's posted erotica? Yeah, she hasn't. That I, I 
looked. Has anyone call, called her up and talked to her? I have. She's been on a medical leave right. and she's back now, but I tried emailing her back in February. She was still technically, technically on her leave. Um, I haven't re-emailed her. Um, I think she probably gets a lot of emails, but hmm. I can try that. So, so as a, did as I see a somebody not, else with the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. As an inexperienced knitter, you're making me all very nervous. So can, I, I don't know what section you're talking yeah. about. Or what? Role, I mean, I would, I would freak if this, well, Catherine, my sister, Catherine could tell me I freaked out how many times over the last week of things I was doing and I haven't even gotten very far. So where where in the pattern are you talking about and maybe maybe iris you could send something out in the email to to so that we can update so i can update it i'm sure there's probably a couple other people that might be helpful for i think on my pattern i noted it as a like question mark exclamation point circle <laughs> for yeah. me it was when it says knit four or knit five and then slip one and then yeah. knit yeah. So it was every single time. And I will tell you that I have ripped out when, after we left here last Wednesday, I decided to start Thursday morning because I had some work to do um, remotely. And um, I ripped it 11 times thinking I was off. And I kept counting the stitches and I thought, Andrea Mallory would never be off. It's me. After 11 times, I called some of my knitting friends and said, I'm a pretty experienced knitter. What the hell am I doing wrong? What am I not reading? They said, oh, are you kidding? You know where it's knit four or knit five and then slip on those rows? Guess what? She's off. So is that on the return row? Uh, That's on the coming back row? I think it is. It's, it's, on, the on, it's on the odd number rows. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think when you... When you get there, you can tell that for those newbies that you can tell that something's not right because you don't have enough. It, you're going two stitches uh, slipped and two stitches knit, and you don't have two stitches to do that. So mm -hmm. I right. backed up just one set of those and and increased a stitch mm -hmm. to okay. make my knit stitch then did the, the uh, two stitches and increased as it tells you to do. Also on, also on the rows where it's the one stitch slip and knit. And you can actually, what I actually did in the end was I looked at her pattern online from my Ravelry library. I blew up one picture of her, I think it was the third, third picture down. Uh, where she wears it to the side, you could really see the whole pattern of the stitches. And I blew it up and I looked at it because you can see that my pattern following her pattern did not look like hers. I was off by a stitch. I wasn't in the pattern grid. Mm -hmm. So I did what you did to make, to fix it. Yeah. But I was just surprised. I, I, I'll be honest, I've knit, I think all of her patterns, I've never ever encountered an error in, ever, in anything with her. And yet there were 11,000 of them on Revelry. I I'm know. confused because I have not had this problem. My my rows have worked out every time. Okay. So, wow. so it's... Mm, so yep. what is... Your count, your count is correct as well? If you my mind. count is correct as well. Every time. So what I'm going to... I, what I'm going to just say is like, I, when I, when it happened to me, it was maybe once or twice. And I was like, well, must've forgotten that make one left or whatever. And so I, I didn't have it consistently, but I think as, as we're talking, what it's making me think about is, yep, human error happens. And if there's a way to happen in your pattern where you don't have to rip out a million times and you can make a, a, a spur of the moment, like Pat was describing, that um, maybe that's sort of how I'll, and I think it's a really great, actually, uh, so Jane, don't be yeah. nervous. Don't panic, because, yes, don't panic. Yep, because you're going to get it, you're going to get it, and the, as long as you're staying in the, you know, as long as you've got the, like, alternating things in the main part, you've got to just accept that, like, if there's a little bit of anomaly on the edge, nobody's going to know, and you can add right. that stitch back, and it can work because, out beautifully. Oh, because is this I have ripped this out time at the edge? and time again. Oops, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Jane. I just said I have 
I've ripped this out so many times. <laughs> Bec I mean, I was up to like, you know, 25, row 25, and then something was wrong. And of course, I didn't have a lifeline in there. So I had to. So, so I'm, I've been having trouble again, because I think I'm a little newbie. Uh, but I did appreciate your email yesterday because that um, made me right. feel better. So thanks. <laughs> but, Good. but Catherine, I Catherine, noted, Catherine noted something. Catherine, um, you were going to say something about the end of the. Yeah. The is that what you guys are talking about at the edge there? That, that there's not a space like between. That's how mine looks. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I haven't had that issue. I, I don't, I don't know. I will say one thing when I got to, after I fixed it by adding a stitch here and there, when I got to the rows where you're knitting three and then you're purling all the way across the row, I then took that one stitch back out somewhere in the middle. I decreased by one. So I would have my right Ooh. stitch count. Mm. That didn't anybody, mess up anybody your pattern. Else? I mean, it no, didn't it works, mess up it's working the... out. It's working out. But <laughs> After ripping it out 11 times and thinking, what the heck am I doing? Hell, you know, I was like. One thing that has helped to keep my count right is I have a ring marker every 10 stitches starting from the exact oh. center. Oh. It's easy to find the exact center and working my way out. And I just keep adding them as I increase stitches. That means I'm knitting with a, a yarn that's very splitty. And so yeah. it's really easy to to uh, lose a stitch, and so so I um, I found that really works well because it's easy to see if you've got ten stitches between markers or not, and I'm not constantly recounting it because recounting 150 stitches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's a great tip, Jill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a simple thing, but it really has made a big difference. And the other thing is, I do that a lot. I'm still very addicted to knit companion. Well, that Jill, I have to tell you that you saw it in the email, right? I did. Because um, I thought, well, what the heck? Jill said it. I should give this a go. You know, if I don't like it, I can go back to my paper and, and pencil. And I actually really liked it, too. I found it really useful because, like you were saying, mm -hmm. that ability to track you know, you do rows one through eight. And so I have my little like ding, 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 ding. The top one is my eight. And then the, the next one down is the second round of eight. And then the next one down is the four. And I, I really appreciated that share. That was awesome. Well, the other thing is it's easy to write notes and it's very easy to um, change it. Like right now, my background is lavender and just the line I'm working on is white. And instead of having a yellow highlighter. And oh, I, okay. I found that that really has been kind of pleasant, especially nice. since color coordinated with my health. This Can you really hold that up, please, Jill? Just a little oh, closer, because sure. we'd love yeah, to see it. The end of a row, so that's not very hard. Oh, wow. Mm, that's so pretty. And, that is gorgeous. And I'm, I'm very happy with it. It's gigantic, but I, Fiddle, I bent it around to see how it was going to look. And you know what? It'll go on very nicely over a jacket. What section are you on? Um, I've got three more rows to go and I can bind off. Oh, really? Oh, she's I'm, I'm on section seven. And I've been obsessed this week. Can I, I, just, can I just show mine again? The same <laughs> color. The hunter's up. Here's the two extremes right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. You are holding it up. I, I, didn't see it. I think I'm I'm on you're wearing um, black and you're holding up black. Ooh, perfect. Oh, sorry. It's blue actually, but oh, yeah. So nice. I have a husband. <laughs> <It's there. laughs> oh. Very nicely trained to see I, have a, I have a question. I, yeah. I read somewhere that you can't, but I'm wondering, could you actually, since you're uh, at the end, if you wanted to extend it and make it larger, could you? Or would it take away from the whole shape and everything? Hmm, good question. Well, I think that the issue becomes the size, like the, you know, this, I'm just, this is my, my small one, but you know, once you angle it off and it, and it goes flat, you know, this part is the part that is going to be the part that's you know, sewed up at the end and seamed, right? And right. so I think you would have to prob, I mean, it could be a different look. I haven't played with it, but 
on mine that I that's finished, it's you know the symmetrical shape that comes in. So I think you'd probably. I mean, on the other hand, if it's seamed up, we were just talking about this in the shop the other day. If it's seamed up at the back and there's some sort of wonky, slightly off jog, probably nobody's going to notice it. Yeah. I am I'm trying to do a modification and I wanted y'all's opinion on whether or not it's going to work. Uh, so I went up a needle size because I liked the drape better. Um, but the pattern, the schematic has the circumference being 26 inches. And I think with my needle size, it's going to be even longer, which is kind of longer than I want. It's more like necklace length. Um, so I want to shorten it a little and I'm trying to figure out which section I can eliminate stuff in um, and I don't mind if like the the triangle part is shorter because the circumference is shorter but I can't figure out which section I can shorten without making the bind off edges not equal does anyone have any thoughts can I just ask a clarifying question so what's your yarn um it's sport weight okay and what's your needle uh six Okay, so what I, so the, um, have, where are you at in your pattern, I guess? I'm on section two, so still pretty early on. My thinking okay. was that section three and four, I could combine. So have the single stitches be uh, color B and then the double stitches be color C. Um, but I, I can't figure out what the end is gonna look like if I do that. So a question that I have is how, what's your measurement right now? Like in terms of along, cause I'm, I'm, you know, you're doing this part somewhere, right? You're sort of in the middle of section yeah. two. Um, yeah. So tell us what, like roughly, you don't have to get out your tape measure, but what would you guess? I'd say um, maybe that's 10 inches, maybe 12. Okay. Yeah. So, but the, I think my, my concern is that 26 inches is what it's supposed to be. That that alone feels too long to me. So I want it to be a little smaller than the pattern calls for. Okay. Yep. Anybody want to pop in here? No. Why not make a paper model and try that on? Like out, out of a newspaper. So how would I... So my concern is that my bind off edges are not going to be equal. So... I don't know if a paper model would show me what the end is going to look like if I cut out some middle stitches. Hmm. So, so, um, so the one that we have in the shop that's a bit closer fitting, mm -hmm. it's the fingering weight. And that one, the dimensions are more like, um, eight inches along the vertical part that seamed at the back of your neck. Uh -huh. And it's, so it's a definitely closer fitting than the, than the one that she's wearing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm wondering if you, so do you feel like 10 inches is already too long for that depth? Um, I think so. Mike, so the, the only real measurement I took was I took my tape measure and I measured 26 inches and I put it around my neck. And it was like, yeah. it was like kind of low. <laughs> so I just, I would like it to be a little closer fitting. Um, and I guess I could play with gauge a little. It's tough because the gauge she gives in the pattern is in stockinette. And I didn't do that because your email said not. <laughs> yeah. So I think that, I think that two things that I'm thinking about right now, one is you like the fabric. So like that's mm -hmm. bottom line you know that's where we're going to operate that this is the fabric you want and my thought is if you're if you're like midway in section two so to me that sounds like you've done you know half of section two is just the like single blips right that yeah. part there's there's nothing to say that you couldn't start your like that turn essentially where you're only you're only increasing on the one side okay. you could just decide to do that at this no point section. and just and then that will change your dimensions um you know a bit and you just like do that on the other side and like does it matter 
you know, you, you know, you can, you can, this is such a fun pattern that you'll be able, you can like, who cares? It's like one stripe of the single blips. Great. You know? Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, that, that might be where I would go, but I definitely early. Yeah. Okay. And anybody else have something better? My only thought is because this pattern is repetitive and it's the same uh, one versus two, you know, to make the, the pattern different, just stop sooner. Because that's really all it's doing. It's just moving forward, make getting a little wider and then starting to get, when it turns the corner, starting to get a little smaller. So I guess just my stop question sooner. is with the back corner, like which side is it decreasing from? Right? <laughs> that's like, I'm having such a hard time visualizing it. I haven't gotten to the first corner. So I'm like, which once so you get to point. So as you're looking at it, if you're holding it up in front of you, it's the right side. Okay. So your left, the uh you when you get to that part up in your left hand corner is uh -huh. the first this part. And as it comes down on the right side, it becomes, you know, this is where the other part is stop so if i cut out the section stopping in a few rows early might guarantee that my back ends are the same length yes yes okay. i mean why try to take something out of the middle and mess up your brain just <laughs> keep going <laughs> and I mean, then my stop only thought when you was think that it's if, long enough mm -hmm. my my only thought was i was worried about you feeling like that back of your neck dimension was getting too big and so then it was going to flop down too much that was yeah. the only reason why i thought maybe turning your corner sooner could help that makes sense too i think yeah my concern is just the back ends being the same length that's where that's where my brain is like short circuiting <laughs> to get that happen. but i guess i could also decrease at a like a more harsh angle or a less harsh angle if that's the concern I don't know. It's tough because it's a diagonal, right? If this were I up and down, it'd be really easy. You have to give yourself enough room to be able to fold it in half to make a hole for your head. Yeah. So if you try to shorten that any, you're going to be pulling it over your head like a hat. You know, it's going to yeah. really be tied up against your... Yeah, I'm afraid if oh, I shorten it on one side, that. it will it's be, be our guinea pig. pig. Great. Well, I'll play around with it. Thank you guys for your advice. Good job. Good job. Hey, <laughs> Somebody was sad. I just muted them. Um, so other folks want to show and tell a little bit. <laughs> Mary, did you have something to say? It looked like, oh. Yeah, um, I, I did. I just, um, I appreciated your note on lifelines. I took a lace class years ago where we talked about using those and I sometimes do them, but um, I just had a, something to share that I use unwaxed dental floss as that, as that um, product, you know, to run through because then I'm not leaving fibers from a yarn in my product. So love that. And um I actually have a friend who makes a product called Dental Lace, and it's a silk um, lace that's unwaxed. And if people need to find something that doesn't have wax, that's a really good one to, to purchase. Great. Thank you. And it, yep. And I did pivot a little from what I had set up last week because I wasn't loving that um, blended spinnaker with my grays and I found a a hank of um oh I found some done roving um a really pretty done roving fingering weight in mine and I'm really really happy with how this color's blending in so can you hold it up for us okay the 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 yarn is this yeah well the, yeah and then here I, it's pretty hard to see this light in this room's not the best but you can see that pink coming in beautiful and, and then, um, as I said, I've got a total of six different gray tones that I'm going to use through it. So pretty, pretty happy with it. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. How about, how about somebody else? Anybody? 
Oh, I see Lisa. Lisa, you're on today. Nice to see you. Hi, Iris. A quick tech question. Is there a yeah. way that I can put this into gallery so I can see everyone's faces or is it in like speaker mode? So if you go into your upper right hand corner of your Zoom screen, it looks like there, there should be hovering your mouse should bring up something that says view. Hmm. Um, and it's okay I, if it doesn't work, but I just are you on your computer? Yes. Okay. And I'm just seeing whoever's talking and then my, my little box is in the corner. And it's okay, I just didn't know if I could see everyone's faces. Are you on an iPad or an IBM? Um, I'm on a MacBook and I, yeah, a, a Mac. Okay, so I think that um, you should see a little uh, icon towards the top left under where your switch camera is. And it looks like a bunch of blocks. Do you see that? Mm. My view on my MacBook is on my right in the very Me top. Me too. Oh, okay. Mm. I'm on an iPad. I thought maybe it would be the same, but I guess not. That's okay. I just am getting the speaker, you know, whoever's talking will come up, but that's okay. It's very small. If you keep moving, if you keep grid. moving your mouse around, just keep your eye out for something that looks like that little like grid of squares. Cause that's okay. what you're looking for to switch okay. the view. I'm on a, I'm on a Mac. I, I could share my screen. I think. I don't think you can share your screen and have the controls come. Actually, no, up. I can't. Yeah. That's, that's too okay. bad. I'll poke around later and- hopefully. How's your shift coming, Lisa? So it's, I was a little concerned because it was extremely tiny to start out with and I'm now growing. So I've gotten to this and it's going it's, really it's, well. It's, this is definitely a challenge. I think this is the most complicated pattern I've ever done and it's really fun, so. It is a fun challenge for yeah. sure. Yeah, challenge for sure. And I had and to how are you out. liking your? I had to step how out. Are you liking your? When you were oh, okay. discussing the the glitch with the pattern, is there is there something that we need to be aware of or? So the jury's everything? out because our friend uh, Catherine has had no problems. Okay. Ronnie's had multiple problems. I've had a couple times where it hasn't worked out. And so my, def my default thinking was like, this was me You're probably missing one of my make one lefts or something like that. And I'll, I'll write something about this, but I think this is a pattern where if you come to the end of the row and you suddenly don't have enough stitches to do your slip to whatever, whatever, mm -hmm. If you look at your pattern and you review what's in the row that you've just finished, as long as those alternate color yeah. blips are where they should be, my recommendation is assume that you just missed a stitch increase and just make a little increase towards the ends and make it work out for yourself. Like I've had to do that maybe two times and I, I'm gonna say that it was probably my mistake. Um, but I think Catherine is probably like the star student of this bunch because she hasn't had any problems. Um, <laughs> but I think it's, it's one of those things that like, if it, if it comes up, first step is how does the fabric look? Am I in line with my blips? And if everything looks good, then just budget a little bit. Okay. So there's not a, cause I missed that part too. There's not a special section where this might occur because I haven't run into it yet, but I'm only at section, I'm finishing up my section two. My, my issue is that it occurs at the beginning of the, um, it occurs at the beginning of the row where like, let's say it says knit four, then in parentheses, slip two, and then knit one. That's where I'm off, the knit four. I think it's, it's, so it's where the pattern is offset. So it happens on the singles because they're offset. For some reason, the, the doubles, the increase offsets it. But in the singles, it has like row one and two. So you start with the colored stitch. And then rows five and six, you start with a slip. And so that's where, for me, it didn't line up. So I think it was the, the repeat 
sent me back to row one and really I needed to be doing row five. That that's the, but but all you have to do is swap those two and, and it worked out. And I did that by looking at what my stitch was like, oh, am I supposed to do a colored one first or am I supposed to do the background color first? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, it's easily fixable in any event. True. As long as you okay. know what it should be, you can make it be that. It's only a stitch. Yep. Reading your knitting, it's a good skill to have. Anybody else have questions or show and tell? I just want to say a quick thanks for your note. Um, it is about the lifeline thread because literally I think it was an hour before I read your email. I was just like, oh my gosh, if I drop a stitch, I'm a goner. I'm just going to have to tear the whole thing out. And the lifeline is going to be a lifeline. So yeah, great. Thanks. Awesome. That was a wonderful. I don't know if I put it in properly, but at least there's something there. Good. Um, there was a, it was a knitter's idea from one of our in-person meetups. And I thought it was a really good one to share. Um, yeah. Patricia, I just saw your note in the chat about um, wanting to receive the notes knitters are talking about. Um, and those are coming out in the emails. Are you not getting the emails from us? I don't think I got, I, if, well, unless I missed it, it's not sounding familiar. So I'll, I'll check my emails, but I thought so since yes. I last week, maybe I'd been dropped from the, um, from the knit along. So. No, if you, if you signed up, you're in it. And um, some, sometimes for Gmail, I notice that people's emails from the goat land in their promotions folder. Oh, okay. And so I, I think there's a way that you can tell Gmail that this is not a promotion. I haven't looked into that. Um, but it, the, the pattern will be, I'll send out an email on a Tuesday and then I'll also send out an email on a Sunday. So knowing when to look is also uh, a good. I, yeah, I found it. Sorry. About oh, good. That. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Uh, I'm knitting with fingering weight yarn and I had to go up to a size six to get gauge. Size five needle didn't do it for me. It happens. We're all unique knitters. Yeah. So maybe I will end up with the right size at the end. I won't even think about having to make it bigger. I have a needle question. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mary Ellen. Hi. Um, so I'm working away here and I have found it frustrating and I'm an experienced knitter. Um, I like I drop a stitch here and there or um, I, I think I'm just tired and you can't do this when you're tired. I can't anyway. Um, but I'm using size fours because I'm a loose knitter, but I was thinking if I was on size five, maybe it would be easier. Can I just, I'm using, you know, circular needles. Can I just change it to a five and see what happens? Like in the middle of it, this is how far I am. Yeah. So you're into row or section three, it looks like. Yes. Uh-huh. How do you like the fabric? You know, what's the fabric feel like for you? It's not tight at all. I mean, it's, it's nice. Nothing My other question it. is how, how pointy are your needle tips? Are you feeling like you? Uh, they're high? pretty pointy. They're knit picks. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you make the rules. So like in a, in a <laughs> cowl, I think you could completely try a different needle size and you could try it for a couple of rows and then go back if you want, um, right. you know, and just, just see if that makes a difference for yourself. I, and hold up your, your piece again. I'd love to see it. Oh, so Gorgeous. pretty. Wow. So, so pretty. It's a it's a different pattern and we definitely had this conversation when we were in the shop on Sunday that some really experienced knitters were finding this to be a challenge and you know mm -hmm. is it 
is it's just it's a really different way of thinking if you've never done the slip stitch knitting it before that's another thing even just somebody said who was a relatively newer knitter she said well what do these brackets mean and well she'd done the ramona and then elizabeth smith uses stars to indicate a pattern repeat but andrea uses brackets so i mean there's all there's always going to be that learning curve but i also know that at least for myself there's certain types of knitting that are just harder for me I, I lace it. I, in, I, I found the Ramona. I, yeah, the Ramona just seems so easy compared to this. And I actually, well, you saw I made that press flower shawl, which is all mosaic knitting and it's all from a chart. And that's really hard. But, um, but this, I think it's just, I, you have to pay attention. And I like well, this where you can just do stock knit, you know, at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> that's why uh, rows three and four are our friends, right? Oh, that's yeah. right. And that's yeah. shift. I was like, hi, row three, I love you. <laughs> I agree. I thought when I read the pattern at first, you know, it's row one to eight, then one to eight again, then one to four, it's going to be a breeze. So I put on, uh, I'm binging uh, the last season of Call the Midwife, uh, my favorite series, and I like to binge it. So I thought, well, I'm going to watch it while I'm doing this. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. Oh, my God. I, admit, I I don't know what it is about this. It should be easier, but it's not. It's it's a pay That's attention. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a pay attention something. Hey, I just came to one of those moments where did I mess up my pattern somewhere along the row? Yes, the answer is yes. <laughs> is Someone, it a pattern? Is it me? It's me this time. So one of my work colleagues called me and I answered the phone. I was right in the middle of fixing a stitch and I said, oh my God, why are you calling me right now? He goes, yeah. I go, oh, I'm just pardon my French, I'm so fucked up with this knitting. He goes, oh, I think I better, yeah, hang up. I'll call you back. I gotta forget it. <laughs> it's like, oh, what has become of me with this thing? But I love it. I love the pattern and I so want to wear it. Well, and I love it so much. And on my second one, I'm for sure much more comfortable with the pattern, except for occasionally I still make mistakes when I'm chatting with you guys. Um, <laughs> but I love, I really am enjoying knitting this and I have plans for a third for my husband, but that might wait a little while because I've also got a sweater that I just started for him. So, you know, you can't have too much going on. I'm going to knit the second one for a special gift, but I'm going to knit it in the uh, spin cycle day, whatever you call it, you know, the sport weight. I'm going to do okay. it with the three colors, just the way it's meant to be and see if maybe, yes, I can watch call the midwife while I'm knitting it. <laughs> That's bold. It's very bold. Yeah. Any other questions, cool. comments, shares? Love to hear from other people. I, yeah, I, I made a couple of mistakes and you can, I can see them. Like when I slipped the stitch, I slipped it in front and it should have been in the back. Yeah. So I figured I'm just going to make fake stitches on top of them when I get done because it'll bug me if I don't. And I know this part is the part that goes at the back of my neck, so it, it'll be hidden, you won't see it, but I'll know it's there. So I'm gonna. You know that you should always, always, my grandmother, when she taught me to knit when I was eight, said to me, always make a mistake in your knitting. Oh, like Walt Whitman does in his so writing. That, so that it's not a machine made, it's a hand knit. Always make Probably. a mistake. You can tell this is handmade anyway. So. Yeah, mine, mine was certainly, it, this is certainly full of them. <laughs> My grandmother would be proud. <laughs> Jennifer, it's beautiful though. Your colors are gorgeous. Thanks. Yeah, I was so excited when I realized, oh, you know, I'm this for me, I'm usually so precise and this, I'm letting it go. If I make a mistake, you know, like if I'm not really on the right row, I decided, oh, the heck with the counting because I've been watching TV series as well when I'm working on it or I'm just really tired. And I have tape on my pattern to mark what row I'm supposed to be on. I'm actually ripping out a row right now because I realized I switched colors 
and I switched wrong side right side. So I, I just ripped out a couple of rows because that doesn't look good. Um, so I'm just gonna bring it back to a right side row when I can and carry on. So I'm, I'm viewing the pattern as more like a guide. I'm not doing it exactly, but I'm trying to just, you know, do my increases when I'm supposed to do increases. So I'll end up with the right shape and I can put it together. But I, I purchased more colors when I was there on Sunday and I'm excited because um, this is, you know, blue is my favorite color. So there's gonna be a lot of blue and it's got two different shades of green. One's kind of a yellow green and one's a more forest green. And there's a little bit of a mauve in here. And this is the main yarn. Um, what's this yarn called? I don't At first, I thought you said there's a little bit of a moth in here, and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> no. moth. Like this is one of my this is one of my colors. It's like a mauve. Right. Hold it up to the to the camera a little bit more, Jennifer. Okay, got it. I don't know oh, where there's beautiful. a beautiful sweet spot. So that color is going to be in here. This is the um, on the round plush. Mm. I mm. think I know that color. It's so pretty in person. Yeah, then here's my, here's one of my greens. But well, they're gonna be beautiful together. Yep, and ah, this is the, what I'm gonna be adding to it. It's like a, a medium or a lighter rust. It's kind of, kind of between rust and like a golden caramel color. And Here's my blue. And that's kind the of, background or no? Well, sort of the background, but I don't know that I even care that one's gonna, I, cause I'm playing around with colors however I like. And this is the I love yellow. It. You're like me, so many colors. It's the cow yeah. of many colors. Yeah. And then I, you know, I, bought, I bought a bunch of Noro. I bought a bunch of Noro um, to do an evening shift so I feel this is like my practice one because I really want to do the big one nice and and you'll have the pattern all in your fingers by then yeah we'll see <laughs> hey Jennifer did you see the email that came out yesterday with the sign up for Saturday for Sunday I did I already signed up okay good you think everybody okay. could show hold up their knitting and show we could all see how everybody's looks with all their colors <laughs> And maybe I'll get ready to do a screenshot if that's okay with people. Yeah. Are, we, still... are we okay with this? Okay, like let's let everybody get up. Pull up your yarn if you have it, whatever. And I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna get ready with my screenshots. Oh my gosh, these are so beautiful. Ready? Right. Okay, it's... Jennifer, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the shift, yay! Hey, I think we got something. So you might see that in a future email. Great. Oh my gosh. That was a great idea, Ronnie. Thank you. They're all gorgeous. They're all different and they're yeah. all fabulous. Yeah. As soon as, you wanted, Iris, as soon as you wanted me to hold it up, I had dropped the stitch. That's why I was like, ah. <laughs> sorry. It's okay. I got um, Lu Lucy, did you want to? Oh, no, you're taking a phone call. Okay. Okay. No, no problem. Um, anybody else feel like a share or I'm, I'm going to, uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Iris, for your emails. Oh, good. Cause I, I was really, I didn't know if I was doing things right. And I had, I'm doing my first one just in strikes because I started this project cause I would be taking a long flight at the end of the month. And I thought this other pattern just wasn't going to work on a little you know, and on an airplane. So I decided just to do some stripes. Great. And I'm gonna do- again? Will you hold it for us? Oh, look at you. Oh, I mean, hold it a little higher. Higher? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh I love this. What an idea. Right. And I'm gonna do some other stitches. Um, I don't know what you call them, but you, it's, it's sort of like an Aaron type uh, the color work in there somewhere. I haven't quite decided. I wanted to get a bigger part to put that in so it would show up more. 
but they'll be love it. Because, so anyhow, I'm, I'm totally, I'm using the basic pattern because I really like the shape of it. And mm -hmm. then I'm, I just decided that I might be better doing this in sport yarn with all the other stuff because I was finding with my small needles and, uh, and everything that I'll never get this thing done. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm doing sport, pardon, sport DK or DK sport. And I'm, I like this because my Rowena, I don't know when it's going to be done because I did the light cardigan. So I'm, my sweater's only like this big right now. Cause Got I, it. I'm using size, I think size four needles and it's gonna take me some time. Yeah, there weren't and, that many people that did the, the lighter weight cardigan for the Ramona. I wish I had really thought about that some more because I think I would have been just as happy if I'd used worsted weight and could get it done faster. Mm. See, for me, I this is going to go faster for me because um, the color changes and just watching it grow gives some instant gratification. Yeah, that, totally. That you don't get with. Um, what you gonna call it? Pull with the sweater. Yeah. yeah, the sweater and 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 my love of purling is not as high as it could be. And <laughs> I should have probably done the sweater in the round, but it didn't feel like figuring out, oh, how much extra yarn do I need to do the steak? And I've even thought about going to the round now because it would still work. But I can't buy the yarn is gone now. So I'd have to go to Ravelry and find somebody, you know, just to be comfortable, which I might still do because <laughs> go a lot faster, but we'll see. Great. Anybody else have have some show and tell or questions? Jennifer, I hate to purl, so I knit backwards. And that gives you the purl. And it's faster. Yeah, Whoa. well, I did that with a, a Barocco sweater that I saw at, a, a, I went on a retreat with a local yarn shop when I lived in Vermont and we had a lot of fun and the Barocco rep came and did a trunk show during, during our retreat. So I bought the yarn and the pattern and I got, started and it's a slip stitch pattern so there was a lot of purling even though it's in the round and i figured out how to do it backwards but when i got to the sleeves my count was off just enough to make me so frustrated that i couldn't figure out how to divide it and not end up feeling like i've got this crooked so I pulled the whole thing out. I'm going to start over again and follow the pattern. I get into trouble because I try to customize too much. And <laughs> certain things you can do that with, but not everything. Oh. So I'm happy to follow the pattern for this. I have one of her, I bought one of her sweater patterns and yarn for the pine tree sweater. I think it is, it has, it's all one color, but it does different patterns like an inverted almost like pine trees, like the, the pattern that, I think her patterns are easy to read. It's, it's just, it was, I, I made mistakes in my execution. Can I ask Jill, you're wearing a beautiful sweater that looks hand knit. Can you share what that pattern is? Yes, I'll have to think about it. It's from a book called Something Fiber. I'll have to look. Um, but yes, I, I did knit it. It's knitted from Seven Sisters yarn or actually uh, string theory yarn before that. And um, and Panis dyed the yards for me for the sweater. 
And I'll go up and get the book. I can't think of the title of it right now, but I'll just be a minute and I'll be back. It's, it's absolutely- I'm so glad you asked that. And yes, it's a nice, easy sweater to knit. Very easy. Pop down, you know, the sleeves are easy. The whole thing went very fast and has a nice corrugated rib on the bottom. Wow, beautiful. Mm, beautiful. And I wear it a lot. <laughs> you, look, you look lovely in it. The colors are wonderful for you. Oh, thank you. It's too bad it's so dark in here, but you know, it gets dark early these days. Yeah. I'll be back. You know, Iris, I, I don't yeah. know what you have planned for the next knit alongs, but I would love to learn how to do stranded work in a mm. sweater. Oh, Something wow. easy. You know, I've done some uh, mittens and, you know, a hat. So I've done some small things. I've had a little bit of an introduction, but I would love to tackle a sweater. We've been talking about, you know, what will the next knit alongs be and sort of just the general like philosophy of our knit alongs. So we're, you know, we're trying to, we're inventing this as we go, Pat. And um, I think, you know, there's, there's, there, it's great to have ideas. We're, we're, we're kind of thinking there might be room for one more knit along before summer. Like I think I said the last time, and then we'll take a break because we get so busy. People are so busy. Um, but we'll, and then in October, I think we're going to bring back Socktober, which was really the, the first thing that kicked this off. And that was just an in-store, um, kind of knit along for the month of October, we were knitting socks, but with the popularity of the zoom connection, I think it might be fun to bring Socktober into the Zoom space. We had just so much fun um, with that. And, but I'll, I'll definitely share that with Kristen in terms of a, a kind of knit along request. The thought that I'm having though is, you know, stranded color work sweater, that can be a really long project. I mean, that can, be, that can, that just sort of amplifies the, the, the duration of a project, especially if you're new to it. So it might be a little bit challenging for the planning, but I'm writing it down. It's a great thought. Maybe just a two color, you know, I mean, you or just one color mm -hmm. and your main color. Yeah. Just as an introduction, because there's a lot of technique yeah. that uh, I don't know that I'm just kind of stumbling through learning on my own. So if we had just a basic, even if it was an accessory, mm -hmm. just a basic yeah. stranded two color class or whatever would be lovely. And, and, you know, it can be any time it, um, it doesn't need to be well, next. <laughs> and, and, well, and the other, the other thing is, I don't know if you all know Mary Jane Mucklestone. She's kind of like a, a big name in main knitting and designing. Mm -hmm. and she um, has lived in the Camden area for many years. I don't know if she still does, but she's got a beautiful book that I think I put in the email that was about the staff knits that Miranda and it was uh, no staff picks and it was Miranda's pick. She picked Cumbria yarn and she picked 200 Fair Isle motifs. And that was a Mary Jane Mucklestone. It's really an incredible Bible. Uh, oh, look, Jill, um, Jill's holding up her gorgeous oh, book. This is called uh, Fair Isle Style. It's a really terrific book. It's got 20 patterns in it and it's by Mary Jane Michaelstone. And you can see the cover is this sweater but with different colors. And I recommend it. It's not a very hard pattern to knit. The charts are very clear and the pattern's very clear. I love that you got that for us. Thank you so much. Well, Thank you for so sharing. The, um, the Fair Isle one, it's so incredible because it's truly a, a, like it is truly 200 Fair Isle patterns and it's just a brilliant reference book where it's just page after page of little blips of like, here's a little Fair Isle this and then it's just, uh, and the other thing that she does is talk a lot about color in Fair Isle work and um, I know several of my colleagues at the shop were fortunate enough to do a stranded color work class with her. So who knows, maybe she'd be willing to do something with us, with Knitters Online. I mean, I think what they did in the, um, in the uh, workshop they did with her was they were actually trying lots of different ones, but basically making like a little tiny wristlet um, mm. practicing a fair isle pattern over just a little wrister and yeah, some great. people added that to like a mitten 
Um, but it was a fun way to explore color and a few of the different patterns. And Mary, oh my gosh, you're gonna love what I'm about to tell you. Mary's wondering about tips for weaving the ends. I'm gonna add it to like, what am I gonna write an email about? Um, okay, tips for ends. Ready for this? Because there's I cord on both sides of this thing, I just put my ends in the I cord edge and oh. forgot them. I mean, there were maybe like two places where it didn't, it was right at the crease or the angle or whatever. And I, I actually wove in a couple times, but I did not weave in all of them. I just sat it into the I cord and forgot it. Yeah. Well, so my I cord side isn't where. Do you have an I cord on both sides? Well, I'm so um, the yeah. um, the 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 straight edge one was was one of the places where I had I cord. So when you when you when you turn the corner oh, and start okay. going towards the point, and that's where most of my a lot of my okay, um, got it. Yep. Yeah. All right, because on the first two sections, your I cord's the opposite end of where your color changes. You're you're totally right on that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Just yeah, was thinking good. I might be missing something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank but you that's okay. That but it like, made for a really fun sewing up project. I was like, oh wait a minute, is this cheating? And then I was like, nope, it's not. no. It's that's but this cheating. is my least favorite thing about coloring color changes right just I have all these ends I have to figure out right so if you can just give a tip on which row like I guess I could tuck them in to the knit row or the pearl row right so but any kind I mean, of advice on that would be great just I will so Mary, you know color work, oh, I'm sorry no you go ahead if you put color work sweater Mary you and you steak it you can do all your color changes in the steak so you don't have to weave in ends. I am not there yet. <laughs> can, I, can I just say for this uh, pattern, I am, I am carrying my yarn up the sides and it is giving, I have, I, I do not ever, ever want to weave any end in for any project. And um, I'm carrying them up the sides and it is making the same edging on both sides and it's a great edging. So it's not an I-corded edging, but I have nothing to weave in. Everything is very neat and pristine. I guess it depends on what look you want. I kind of love the I-cord, or the I -cord, but there's just so many ways to customize. I do, I mm -hmm. love the I-cord, but I never ever in my mind, I will never ever weave in an end. I, I once did a huge, fabulous sweater of many colors, and it took me three weeks to knit the sweater and three months to weave in all the edges. Mm. <laughs> I said, by the time I was done, I actually gave it away as a gift. I said, I don't even want to see this thing ever in my life. Well, I'm going to say something really heretical right now which is came from one of my best knitting friends who was, it was so awesome. She was actually in the shop with us. She came from Vermont to visit me and she was like, and I want to be there for the kickoff of the shift. So that was super fun. And she's been knitting for, I think almost 50 years. And she was like, I make knots. And I was like, whoa, we've been friends for like 20 years. And I'm just finding this out about you, you rebel. And she's like, I've never had any of my knots break. It doesn't make a lump that I can feel. Maybe I'm just not that sensitive, but there it is. And I was, I felt like we'd have a real big reveal in our friendship that I'd gone on, you know, all of these years, not knowing this very big thing about my friend. What but an idea. What a creative I idea. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never thought of that one, but wow. I think knitters are very creative people by nature. Knitters are 100%. nice, knitters are nice, knitters are kind, knitters are creative. Because anybody, you can teach anyone to knit because it's just basically knit, purl, increase, decrease, yarn over. It's, it's really, 
But the thing of it is, if you ever, I love to look through all the Ravelry, Ravelry projects for, for a pattern, and you will see many differences if you really look at them, blow them up because of people's creativity. So I feel that everything that you knit, no matter what it is, becomes a unique wearable work of art. Agreed. I totally agreed. And I think the other part about it too is that there's, you know, there's creativity in your color, in your stitch work, in the way that you're going to modify whatever you're making. And there's also the creative problem solving that we're doing all the time. I think it's such a great way to honor the sort of craft. I was working on this sweater for my husband and I knew what I wanted to do and I couldn't find a YouTube video to tell me how to do it. And I just was like, well, I guess I'm just gonna have to figure this out, you know, cause that's what knitters do. And um, it was about, I was doing corrugated ribbing on the neck of a sweater and I needed to do short rows. I, I was adding the corrugated ribbing. So that was my modification. And then I was like, oh, short rows, corrugated ribbing. What's this, how's this gonna work out? But I made it work out, so. It's fun to hear from everybody. It's fun to, like I said, the idea sharing and the the hive mind that we have when we get together here, it's pretty fun. That's a good way to spend a Wednesday afternoon. I agree. And you're all, I just wanna say a lovely, lovely bunch of ladies. That is true. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> a pleasure to be with mm -hmm. you. I have had this pattern since she put it out. You know how long ago that was? Mm -hmm. I tried to cast on and knit it a few different times. No way. No well, way. good. We're here for you now. Well, I was excited so when fun. this was happening. I said, this is it. I'm confined anyway. So what the heck? What can the I just I just had a it's at 601. So I want to let anybody who wants to hop off, hop off, feel free. But I just did have a question in the chat about iCord. Um and it's it's so in the shift, so I, okay, to the most basic, I cord is like the tiniest bit of circular knitting, circular knitting you could imagine. It's basically a very small circle. And so how it works um, when you're just making, because you can make an I cord to like tie under your chin if you're making a hat or for a little person. And essentially it's like you take three or maybe four stitches, you've got their stitches on um, a, on a double pointed needle and the yarn comes out of the bottom end of those stitches but you're knitting like you would normally knit so it feels weird but you're you're knitting with that tail to come up and then you're sliding the stitches down to the other end again your yarn is now at the wrong end that we would normally use it and you're knitting so essentially you're creating this very very small little piece of circular knitting that creates a long tail and it kind of like if you've ever seen those knitting mushrooms for children where it just kind of creates this long tube that's what that's what you're doing really and so there's also some really beautiful ways that you can create a, an i cord edge as part of your knitting for a very neat finished edge so on the shift it's this kind of nicely rolled edging i don't know if everybody's able to see that but it's like a, just a nicely little rolled edge and what happens in the pattern is when you slip those last three stitches, when the pattern says slip the last three stitches, great. So essentially you're building that I cord edge, which is just so nifty and neat as you go. It's also, if you've seen the Sophie scarf pattern, it's utilized in the Sophie scarf pattern. And it's just, it's such a clever way to make a really nice, firm, finished looking edge as you go along. Nice. Just in case any of you need chemo caps, I am from chemocaps.com. Oh, that's amazing. Pat, were you just holding up chicken eggs? Did your girls just lay those chicken eggs? They did. I just went out to put them to bed and they had left me a little surprise. Oh, oh, sweet present gosh. for the day. Breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> oh, sweet. Love that. 
Well, I'm going to let us go for evenings, but as always, thank you for being here with us and we'll see you next Wednesday. If you have questions that come up, please don't hesitate to send an email. I look at the emails. I love answering the questions and hopefully sometimes they have good answers, but I love hearing all of your answers too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Iris. Thank I you. Thank you, Leigh. Thank you. Good night, night. everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Have fun. Be safe. Be